Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living and a retirement worth having. Most people are familiar that there is an illness at the present time brewing across America. But there's more than one illness. You see, cancer has been an illness that has been afflicting American citizens and many citizens around the world for a marvelously long time. It is one of those indicators that we get in cellular health from our family's lineage, but we also get it from other things. The late Louise Hayes, unless she's still alive, and I'm not actually sure on that, but she's a marvelous author, talks about how people often get illnesses from their emotions. She's got an impressive book that talks about that, and I sort of believe her research and her way. But I can't say what her faith is today. What I know is that people who write books like me and others know precisely what they wrote because they spend time scripting it, crafting it, editing it, producing it, being pleased by it, laughing at it, crying at it. I've written some scenes recently, one really powerful one with my help of my angels, of course, and the angels around us that guide us and love us and care for us, that just made me cry. And I'm thinking, we've got to put that in something. Now, when I walk and I talk and I mumble, I am thinking about things. My late father was a marvelous orator. He gave great presentations and it was a part of his job in salesmanship for a major international corporation. What he taught us was that we didn't know how something felt for us unless we said it aloud. He said it allows us to check our emotions. He was also one of these crazy salesman guys who believed in the power of manifestation, if you could call it that. The power of greatness, I think, was a CD set. But he literally would make me laugh with his very loud shouting of, I feel great! He said, if you're feeling bad, this is what you do. Stand in front of the mirror and shout this out. And it would just make me giggle. But so would Horace in his pet mountain lion stories that he would tell as tongue-in-cheek which I wish I could do today, and I wish my asshole late brother had videotaped while he still had the ability to do it. It made many grandchildren laugh. In the life of my mother, there are things that I wish that my siblings would start recording. My mother is a wealth of information of how to heal yourself naturally with good foods, good nutrition, and a lot of loving ideas. She would teach us these quips about the Bible, she would teach us how to evangelize others, and she often talked about her friends in college that were swarries and had dots on their foreheads, and therefore we were taught how to regard the world. But that was a different generation. That was a totally different group of people, and that was a situation probably when Mahatma Gandhi was a part of that realm and that world. Peacekeepers of America must be peacekeepers and fellowship people who lead fellowship must be true leaders. I can remember going to a men's Bible course or book course of some kind at one of the largest, most famous, most popular churches in my community. What I was amazed about is how incredibly poor the introductions with men were through the six or seven weeks we did that. I left not feeling like I met anyone at all, nor did I feel like anyone gave a shit after the class was over to talk. On the other hand, when I led an activity through my classroom and my professional home, I had the responsibility of feeding people because it's what my late father talked about when he led Bible studies, when he did things for the community, was it was our job to provide things and he used to do a men's breakfast where he made scrambled eggs or omelets or things like this and took them in like other men did to share and fellowship. The challenge for me was that I was probably in the roughest point of my business and the de decline of my situation for my own losses in life. There were certainly other people in the room, other guys in the room, who had a little bit lesser situation than me, but it was amazing how many of the wealthy guys did absolutely nothing to bring any food to the potluck that we were supposed to be having each week to discuss the Bible, and yet nobody could ever stay on the fucking task 
of the Bible topics we were supposed to hack. So it's amazing how men will commandeer a meeting if they have a chance to talk about their emotions and their feelings when it's just men, and when the expectation is you can drop your guard and speak. I made a few good relationships, but I was always amazed at how poorly people would regard feedback, except from me, which was sort of strange. And I think it was because I still had some pretty good skill sets at that time before I blew them open wide as I have them now. 